I'm Antonio Waller, I'm the VP of Sales for Ashokas. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Leah and their team for such a great organization. I think you'll all agree it's been great to uh, interact with industry partners again face to face after a very complicated year. So I'm very excited to be here and, and uh, I welcome you to this presentation. Um, so, Astrocast is a leading IoT nano satellite operator. We have a constellation of nano satellites in low Earth orbit. Uh, we plan to extend that constellation up to 100 satellites by 2023, and that it enables us to provide very low cost, uh, low bit rate communication for IoT projects. We do this by supplying what essentially are satellite modems, what we call the modules, and through a series of very small low Earth orbit satellites, which we build ourselves. Now, what is it we can do for IoT companies? Well, let's look at the challenges that IoT companies are facing today. One of the obvious ones is obviously the coverage. So cellular and terrestrial uh, network operators only cover 10% of Earth right now. So you have 90% of Earth where you're not able to operate. And this kind of highlights one of the problems that was mentioned in one of the talks yesterday. Where are the 44 billion connected devices that everybody is expecting? And part of the problem is the lack of continuous connectivity. So what we do is enhance current terrestrial communication. And where they can't reach, we provide these modules and that low-cost communication in order for you to be able to provide 100% full coverage for these IoT projects. Obviously, in rural, non-urban areas, you're kind of forced to work with satellites. So what we bring into that space are very affordable communications, which three years ago, maybe, if we had spoken, it would have been impossible to find the use case and the business case around your projects. So this is something that we're bringing. We, we are, people like to use the word disruptive. We think that we are going to be disruptive in this industry um, with regards to the costs that we are applying to satellite connectivity. The other problem, obviously, is the cost, as we mentioned. The data transmission in general can be very expensive. And if you're talking about satellite connectivity with legacy operators, satellite operators, it's extremely expensive. It's prohibitively, prohibitively expensive. The reason being, when they set up their network, they had to spend a lot of money on very expensive satellites, which cost a lot of money to get up into space. Now, we've switched that model around. We've built our network from the ground up. We build the nano satellites ourselves. And we use launchers such as SpaceX to get them up into orbit. So that means that we're very, very cheap to build a satellite and to get it up into our network. So what we're doing is we're transmitting those savings onto the necessary hardware you, that you need, which are the miniaturized modules, and into the data plans so you can have affordable plans and be able to present truly global IoT projects. Another challenge, obviously, in the IoT space is the size of the modules and antennas that you need to use to integrate into your own devices. Now, traditional satellite players tend to use frequencies where you need a big, chunky, bulky antenna, which means that there's a lot of projects that you cannot operate in. If you're talking about animal tracking, um, uh, small devices, human trackers, you need to have a very small form factor. So we work on what's called the L-band spectrum. The L-band spectrum allows us to make very small patch antennas that you can very easily integrate into your own devices. Another common request, because of the challenge that's been faced, is the power consumption of these communication modules. Uh, um, GSM uh, type modems are by nature very power hungry. Um, in the case of satellite, we, can, we are what's called ultra low power uh, consumption because we can go to very, very deep sleep because we know exactly when the satellites are going over. So our modem only wakes up when it needs to wake up. So we've done some tests in house and you can consider to have up to 10 to 20 years battery uh, on a single device uh, on a low, obviously in a low frequency communication mode. But the whole point of this is to get the return on investment on your projects. If you have to go out every couple of years to change the batteries on a device, you're obviously not going to get the return on investment and be able to apply your business case because you're constantly going to have to spend money keeping this network up. Now, you don't need to do this with us because we go direct from asset to satellite. So we maintain that network and we have the ultra low power consumption, which means that you can put a device out in the field and forget about it and not go back, physically go back to it. So again, it allows you to build the right business case. Another important use with regards to current existing terrest uh, terrestrial technologies is the, the need for bi-directional communication. Sometimes you need to send out a command to that device that you have out in the field. It may very well be that we need to do a change of firmware over time. You may need to have a, a backdoor access just to get a fault code out of a non-working device out in the field. You may be able to do a simple digital reboot 
uh, accessing that device. Now, obviously, we do this by very low bit communication. We focus on the low end of the spectrum. We don't do broadband. We don't do image. We don't do voice. We do very low bit rate, very low cost communication, which covers 80% of IoT use cases in any case. Um, and another thing that LBAN allows us is we're not affected by weather interference in the same way other frequencies and other satellite players are. So again, some mission critical uh, projects, you're going to need something that communicates under any circumstance or any weather um, interference. So how do we do this? On one hand, as mentioned before, we have satellites who are 100% designed and built by us in Switzerland. Uh, as I said before, we launch with aggregators and new space uh, operators such as uh, SpaceX. We, last month, we launched five of our satellites with a record, world record-breaking launch, where I believe they launched 89 nano satellites together, five of which were ours. We have program launches for the next two or three years to complete our network, and that, what that will allow is for us to reduce our latency. So today we have a full service, you have global coverage, um, but we have medium latency, which covers most of the use cases in any case. Um, but that will improve as we make our network more dense, that latency will be lower and lower till by 2023, 2024, it will be close to real time and will cover 90% of applications that you can find out in the field. These satellites have a lifespan around three to five years, and we can easily deorbit them, keeping a pristine space environment clean, because we have a propulsion system on them which allows us to um, deorbit them in case of risk of collision. We get a heads up that something's coming our way, and when the service is over, we can lower their orbit so they burn out in the atmosphere much quicker. So there is no residue, uh, nothing left from our satellites up in space. Now, what we facilitate to partner such as yourself, a very small low form factor uh, modules. These are essentially satellite modems. They're only, as you can see, they're about three to 35 millimeters uh, big. And that comes with a patch antenna, you can see on the right, which is about the same size as the module. Now compare that to the chunky, bulky UHF, VHF antennas that are currently in the market. You're never gonna put one of those antennas onto a cow. It's just not gonna let you. So if you're gonna be tracking animals, some of our projects are around ESG. Some of our partners are tracking dolphins. Uh, they're taking water temperature. They're taking um, soil measurements. And obviously the devices need to be miniaturized. So this allows us to build these patch antennas and be able to operate in very small um, device environments. Now, what does that allow us to do? Well, it allows us to enter any kind of industry, really. We are, in essence, a network operator. We're on top of the, of the IoT stack. In essence, we are like a mobile phone carrier, but instead of having masts, we have satellites up in the sky. So. This allows us, again, to operate in any space. We can complement terrestrial networks in urban environments where they, have where they may have some connectivity issues. So maybe they can reach 80% of the client's assets, but 20% are in gray areas where you cannot communicate. Well, this is where we come in. We provide direct asset to satellite communication down to base station to the cloud, and you can pull or push that data through the API and present a full, real connectivity solution that covers uh, a global visibility, which really is what's missing right now in IoT in order to reach those 44 billion connections that we're all uh, desiring to come our way. So as mentioned, we work in the environmental space, um, you know, taking measures, uh, wind farms, um, uh, power industries. We work in the connected vehicle industry, obviously maritime environments, deserts, rural, uh, mountains, uh, jungles, anywhere where you cannot reach or it's not viable to reach with terrestrial connectivity, we can do so. We don't do backhaul, again, to insist, direct from asset to satellite and back into your application. Mining, oil and gas, asset monitoring, and agriculture and livestock, which is a, a, a big space for us now. Um, it's, it's been a promise many years in the IoT space. It really hasn't come. And again, it goes down to the high power consumption of existing solutions, uh, big antennas, and prohibitive satellite costs. So we can provide um, very reasonable costs. I like to say you can, come and dis uh, you can come and see us. We're in the stand in the corner there after the show. And I, we can get into details exactly about how much that would cost. But I like to say for the less than the price of a coffee per month, per asset, you can have global connectivity with your IoT assets. That's how cheap we are. That is very close to terrestrial costs. So again, we don't compete with terrestrial. If you can cover 100% of your project with terrestrial technology, you're good to go. 
But if for any reason you cannot reach 100% of your connectivity or those assets are moving and they regularly move out of that coverage, come and talk to us because you're going to be very surprised at how economic and how business focused and how you can build your business case around these costs. So to summarize, what can we do for you? We can take your IOC strategy further. We enhance your existing solutions by cost-effective satellite connectivity, miniaturized modules and patch antennas, which is enabled by the L-band spectrum. We have two-way communication that allows you to interact with those assets. We have ultra-low power terminals, which allow you to get the return on investment and build your business case with those assets out in the field, which you no longer need to visit physically, and those low data uh, those low-cost data plans that you need, again, to build a viable business plan. So I wanted to keep it short and simple today. It's been a long couple of days. Again, to reiterate, do consider as your partner to complement your existing terrestrial solutions. And if you're working in a remote environment, you definitely need to talk to us because I think we can bring what the industry really needs, which is true, global, affordable connectivity. Thank you very much. That's it for today.